America obliterates half of Iran's navy in eight hours. Operation Praying Mantis. Absolutely love the fat electrician. Definitely recommend you check him out. It's the time that the U.S. Navy got upset and destroyed half of Iran's entire naval fleet in a single eight-hour workday. Nutty. Today I, I will, before we get into this, state that this will not be political. I uh, do not intend for this to be political. I'm looking at this, at this strictly from a military history standpoint, so please respect that. Please respect that in the comments as well. We're talking about Operation Praying Mantis. But real quick, this video is sponsored by Zydax Custom Gaming PCs. Nice. They are all built right here in America with American-based tech support and a lifetime warranty. It's nice. a computer that I use and the one that I would recommend. I'll have them linked down below if you want to check them out. Let's get to this video. All right, important background info. 1980, Iraq decided to invade Iran. Why? Don't really care. Not pertinent to the story. However, yeah. at the end of that war, <laughs> Iran decides, hey, we're going to pull a page out of the old art of war by Sun Tzu. We're uh -huh. going to cut off the enemy supply lines, deprive the enemy of nice things. It's going to work out great. Iraq's got a weak navy. We're going to wipe out their navy. And then every time they send out an oil tanker through the Persian Gulf, we're going to blow that up. Rough. So they can't sell any liquid dinosaur. They can't make any money. They go broke. We win the war. Hooray. It's yeah. No, that's how, that's how you would do that, yeah. Cut off the supply line. Cut off the, the the effectively, the blood flow to the area. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's a solid plan. Yeah. So they do exactly that. Then Kuwait comes out of left field, and they're like, hey, we've been financially backing Iraq through this entire war for the past seven years. We need to make sure they win so we can get our money back. So we're going to go ahead and let Iraq use our oil tankers to export oil. So Iran is like, well, that's an easy problem to solve. I'll just blow up all the Kuwaiti oil tankers as well, which is exactly what they do. But here's the catch. Kuwait at this point in time is like the one major exporter of oil that wasn't really part of OPEC. Right. They, that they were selling oil on the global market significantly cheaper than everybody else driving down the entire oil market. Uh -huh. And now that their oil tankers are getting blown up as well, it means that Kuwait can no longer sell oil on the cheap cheap, meaning that Iran has now inadvertently committed the cardinal sin of the late 20th century, raising gas prices. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this is going places. I'm uh I'm sensing some uh some uh, some liberation and or freedom intent is about to get involved. <laughs> Now the entire Western world looks over at the Persian Gulf like, the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. The ghost of Sun Tzu's sitting there shaking his head like, that's that's the one exception. I would have messed with any supply line except for that one because we all know what happens next. <laughs> America! <laughs> there it is. Yeah, America then proceeds to assemble the largest naval convoy operation since World War II, send them into the Persian Gulf to protect Kuwaiti oil tankers. It is at this moment that Iran should have been like, well, that's unfortunate, time to figure out plan B, right. because this obviously is not going to work out. However, they decide that they're going to double down. What they're going to do is they're going to take a bunch of magnetic underwater mines, uh -huh. and they're just going to spread them out all over the Persian Gulf in international waters and... That's not going to have any consequences. Nope, definitely not. At it, all. It will. So fast forward, April 14th, 1988. The international water, pause champ. International waters are definitely one of those things that get a little murky. No pun intended. Oh boy. Yeah, doing something in international waters you shouldn't is a... That's a big no no. The USS Samuel B. Roberts, a guided missile frigate, which is basically brand new at this point, this is like its first big operation, is out there escorting a Kuwaiti oil tanker and it runs into a minefield, hits a mine, blows up the keel of the ship. The Oof. keel is this bottom part right here. It like supports and stabilizes the structure of the entire mm -hmm. ship and it gets blown completely in half. At this point, the only thing holding this boat together is the actual deck. One second, everything's fine. The next second, there's a 15 foot wide hole in the bottom of your ship. Everything's on fire and water is rushing in. The Oof. USS Samuel B. Roberts took on half of its weight in water in the first minute. This is a catastrophic amount of damage that would sink 99% of ships, but as fate would have it, the crew of the USS Samuel B. Roberts had already been winning competitions for having the best damage control crew in the Navy. Amazing. So the entire crew gets to work. They're putting out fires, they're plugging holes. They're literally cinching the hole together with steel cables trying so what I'm hearing is that this uh, this crew is just built different, even in Navy standards. They are just built different, built legendary. Trying to stabilize it because the only thing holding it together is a deck at this point. Yeah. Over the course of the next five hours, the entire crew fights their ass off and somehow manages to get the situation under control and limp the ship all the way back to Dubai where they can get it to a port. Yeah. And the most incredible part of all of it, not a single American was killed. Only 10 men were injured during the fire and the initial explosion. That is impressive. That is impressive. That 
That is legendary because, like, I mean, you imagine right, if you were on the ship, and I mean, obviously you would have, should have naval training, you should have military training to be on there, right? Like, to just have a mine effectively just try to ruin this boat's whole day, literally an explosive, and take on half of the ship's weight in the first minute with only 10, ca uh, not casualties, um, 10 injuries, right? Absolutely just impeccable. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, if no one got injured, that'd be, you know, the perfect outcome. However, that is, that is damn good. So the crew survived, the boat's basically completely destroyed. Then America sends in an underwater crew, figure out what happened. They find the remnants of the mine. They check out the other mines. Yep, they're Iranian. At this point, now somebody has to inform the president because this is a big deal. And the president at this point in time is, let me check my notes, uh, fucking Ronald Reagan. Oh, oh no. Oh no. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. So they go ahead and they brief Ronald there's no way, wait a minute. There's no way that that's a real clip. Uh, fucking Ronald Reagan. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. So <laughs> that is the perfect clip. That is, I love it. I, I don't have the full context to Reagan's presidency, but God damn it, that is, that is, that is amazing. That is perfect. I didn't know this was a clip. So they go ahead and they brief Ronald Reagan on everything that happened. He's super happy that everybody survived. And he's like, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to issue a proportional response. And what the U.S. Navy heard was... I All right, so here's the plan. <laughs> Iran currently has three oil it's rigs the in the Persian Gulf that are not being used for drilling oil, but as military bases for their naval operations. Right. So the U.S. Navy is going to go ahead and take out all three of those. Now, I don't really know what the guided missile frigate to oil rig exchange ratio is, but we're going to go ahead and err on the set of caution and say that it's not quite proportional enough. All of yet. them? All of them. <laughs> So Iran also really only has like two modern naval vessels. That's the Iranian frigate Sahand and the Iranian frigate Sabatland. They're going to go ahead and take out at least one of those, maybe both. We'll see how proportional they want to get. And then by the time they get all that done, that should be a nice eight hour work day. It'll be time to clock out and go get some ice cream. So in yeah. order to get all this done by quitting time, they're going to go ahead and establish three different surface attack groups. Each group is going to have two destroyers and one bonus ship. That bonus ship is either going to be an amphibious landing ship or a frigate. Either way, they're all going to be identified as Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Okay. Bravo group is tasked with taking out two oil rigs. Charlie group is tasked with taking out the one remaining oil rig. And Delta's mission is to go hunt down those two frigates and take them out. And then Delta out here being like, mm, lunch. <laughs> And just for insurance purposes, we're also going to have the USS Enterprise parked right outside the Persian Gulf to provide air support. Why does it say equals MC squared on there? I'm definitely missing a joke there. You know, in case we need it. So April 18th, 1988, four days after the mining of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, Operation Praying Mantis goes into full swing and Bravo Group shows up at their oil rig first. At which point they radio over to the oil rig and inform them that they will be blowing it up in five minutes and that they should all leave. Nice. So a bunch of people start leaving. They hop in tugboats and take off. Bravo the U.S. Navy just imagine if you will. The U.S. Navy just shows up, right? Like maybe they show up to you, like building something, or whatever. It's like, yeah, we're gonna be blowing this up. What? What are you gonna do? You gonna you gonna gonna gonna, gonna resist? Gonna, gonna stop them? And I, I I can't stop the I ain't stopping the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> the Navy wants something blown up. The Navy's going to get it. Bravo Group, seeing that they're making an honest effort to actually evacuate, agrees to give them 15 more minutes. So fast forward 20 minutes later, they send out another radio message. Hey, time's up. They then fire the five inch guns right over the top of the oil rig with the round set to air burst hopefully scaring off any stragglers. Oh, no. And it is at this point that some Iranian military member decides that he is going to audition to be the main character of this story because he hops on a 23 millimeter anti-aircraft gun and opens fire on Bravo Group. Oh, and without no. skipping a beat, one of the five inch guns on one of the destroyers just goes <laughs> and just fucking direct hit smokes this dude. Oh my God. I'm just, it's just like, you have just given the Navy the okay for engagement. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> you done you done fucked up. Dude, barely touches the rest of the oil rig. This guy definitely not the main character but the silver lining he at least made it into the credits as baloney miss cloud number one nice. now obviously i'm paraphrasing here but at this point bravo group radios over to the oil rig one last time something along the lines of hey does anybody else need to find out what it's like to chew five gum are you fuckers <laughs> ready to quit the oil rig finally radios back and is like yeah 
yeah, please cease fire. We're going to leave. Yeah. So all the Iranian military members leave. Bravo Group decides to open up on it for a little bit with the five inch guns before sending over a couple of Hueys full of Marines. The Marines hop out, place some demo charges, hop back on the helicopters, take off. The entire oil rig blows up and already things are getting more proportional. Proportion. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> and while all that was happening, Charlie Group made it to their first oil rig as well, and pretty much the exact same thing played out. The only differences were Charlie Group didn't have Marines to place the demo charges. They had Navy SEALs. Oh, no. And when the Iranians opened up with the 23 millimeter anti-aircraft guns, they just decided to keep firing five inch shells at the oil platform yeah. until it burst into flames and burnt <laughs> the entire thing to the ground. At which point, the commander of the destroyer kind of looks over at the Navy SEALs and is like, sorry, I guess you guys get to sit this one out. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, what is that? I'm like, these seals are ready to go, right? They're re they're ready. They're ready to go. And it's just like, imagine having to be that um, the SO, right? It's CO, I, Senior Commanding Officer. I don't know which one would be in charge here specifically. And just imagine having to tell the seals, just like, yeah, um, yeah, we're actually good. <laughs> Wonder how. <laughs> what's what's the meme uh my disappointment is immeasurable when my day is ruined <laughs> oh mission got canceled good and while all that's going down bravo groups already making their way over to the third oil rig at which point they pick up something on radar and it's definitely another enemy ship headed right towards oh them. no and at this point you have to remember this is the late 1980s none of the american sailors have seen naval warfare on this scale the pucker factor is on they are getting harpoon missiles ready and they are about to get in like one of the biggest naval fights since world war ii right at which point whoever's in charge of bravo group decides to take a deep breath and they're like okay let's just Let's send up a helicopter real quick just to verify that it's actually an enemy ship. Oh, so the yeah, helicopter goes yeah. up, radios back to Bravo Group. It's definitely a warship, but it's a Soviet destroyer. At which point everybody's like, what? What? What is happening right now? <laughs> is it the Pepsi Navy? Yo! <laughs> so they radio over to this Russian destroyer and they're like, what are your intentions? And the Russian commander radios back in broken English. I swear to God, this is a real quote. I'm just here to take pictures. Yeah. For history. Yeah. Look, I know. You know, I, I honestly, I can respect that, actually. I, I, I can respect that. That I bash on the Soviet Union and communism every single chance I get. But this time around, I got to give it to them. These guys know how to party. <laughs> just straight up rolling into the middle of the largest naval operation since World War II to yeah. eat popcorn and watch. Legends. At this point, Iran finally figures out that there's something going on, but they don't really know what, so they just begin attacking any ship they can find, and the first ship they found was a civilian cargo ship called the Willy Tide, that they begin attacking with bog hammer style speedboats. So the Willy Tide radios for help, the USS Enterprise responds by sending up a bunch of A6 intruders, as well as F-14 Tomcats. The A6 intruders show up, start dropping cluster bombs, they end up hitting one of the speedboats and scattering the rest. Oh, no. The civilian cargo ship is saved, hooray, cutting back to Charlie group now there's an iranian fast attack ship coming right at them uh -huh. so they radio over like hey yeah we're kind of going around blowing up all your stuff but also we've got a very specific list you're not on it so how about you just go away and we'll forget we saw you the iranian oh no oh no he's not he's they're not they're, they're not there's there's no way there's no way that they're gonna just be like nah no nah, you can you can sod right off mate there's no way right Fast attack ship message is back. Sounds good. We'll do that. Yeah, and then okay. they just keep driving yeah. right towards them. And then this Iranian fast attack ship gets within like 15 miles of Charlie Group, which is like point blank range for a naval battle. Yeah. Charlie Group radios again, dude, what are you doing? To which they respond, I'm following orders. And then they proceeded to lock their radar on Charlie Group, which Charlie Group can see. At which point, Charlie Group immediately launches five missiles directly. <laughs> No, it just got better. They're just like, mate, mate, are you sure about this? I'm just following orders. Radar lock them. Seize it. <sighs> Sigh. <laughs> <laughs> directly at the Iranian vessel. The Iranian vessel fires a harpoon missile back at Charlie Group. Both groups now have missiles in the air screaming towards one another. The Americans launch countermeasures shooting up chaff rockets that end up catching the harpoon missile, detonating it in midair. Nice. The Iranian vessel, on the other hand, did not have any countermeasures oh, no. capable of stopping the newer technology oh, behind no. the American missiles, and it would end up getting sunk pretty much immediately. Then, before anybody can really even fully wow. digest what just happened, radar picks up three Iranian F-4s screaming towards 
towards Charlie Group. Charlie Group then turns, fires a bunch of surface-to-air missiles at the F-4s. The F-4s see them coming. They're like, oh shit. They pop yeah. a U-turn and try to outrun them. F-4s, while they are extremely fast, can't outrun missiles. So one of the missiles ends up blowing a wing off one of the F-4s. Now America has taken out an entire naval vessel and an F-4 that they did not plan on taking out. <laughs> and it's throwing off all of our proportions. And no. No. Imagine having to fill out that paperwork after, though. Just like, just like, I'm sorry, you did what? I mean, these these were the targets, though. Yeah, but things escalated. <laughs> because of that, American leadership orders Bravo Group to stand down. We're not going to go take out that third oil rig. And right as soon as that order gets given out, Delta Group chimes in. is like, hey, we found that frigate we were looking for. So now nobody knows what to do because on one hand, things are already getting out of control. But on the other hand, we really want to take out these frigates. So American leadership decides, well, we might not even have to make a hard decision. Maybe that's not even the frigate and the radar is wrong. Why don't you go ahead and send a couple A6 intruders over, do a flyby. They can verify that it's actually this new modern frigate. And if it is, we'll make a decision from there. Or so they thought, because the A6 pilots are about to decide that they are, in fact, the main characters of this story. Oh, no. You see, the USS Enterprise and its aircraft aren't really supposed to be doing a whole lot. Uh -huh. They're more or less just there for insurance. In fact, yeah. they're only allowed to engage the enemy under one of two conditions. Okay. One, the President of the United States signs off on it, which is actually what happened with the speedboats earlier. Right. Or two, they get fired upon first. So they yeah, got told to go fly by this boat to verify that it is, in fact, the new monitor frigate but they didn't get told how to fly by the boat so they drop down 50 feet above the water and just gun it and they buzz the entire ship so the ship opens fire with its aa guns but these planes are so low to the water the aa guns can't actually aim down low enough so all the anti-aircraft fire goes right over the top of them <laughs> they continue to stay low enough till they get out of anti-aircraft gun range and then they pull up at which point the ship launches a bunch of surface-to-air missiles at them. They drop chaff as a countermeasure, takes care of those. No big deal. Uh -huh. They then go around, do a U-turn, send a radio message to this frigate, I'm going to sink you now. Which they can now <laughs> legally do, because remember, the ship fired on them first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. They, uh, uh, they, they did, in fact, shoot first. They, in fact, shot first. No victim to one of the classic blunders. So the A-6 fires an anti-ship harpoon missile, and the second they pull the trigger on that, the fire control team from the USS Enterprise is like, what the fuck are you doing? We're not supposed to be killing things yet. And the yeah. A-6s are like, look, they fired at us first. Them's the rules. Them's and the, the rules. USS Enterprise is like, holy shit, okay, <laughs> I guess. Let them have it. Then The, the paperwork, the share, like, amount of paperwork. Harpoon missile finally makes impact. It's a bullseye. The A6s do a U-turn, go drop another 500-pound laser-guided bomb right through the deck of this frigate, fly past it, do another U-turn, come back, drop a 1,000-pound bomb on it. Then they radio over to the Enterprise and like, yeah, it's definitely going to sink. We're going to head back. <laughs> so the A6s take off, headed back to the Enterprise, and like five minutes later, Delta Group shows up with their warships and begin firing on the already sinking frigate. Wow. They hit the magazine. The frigate explodes, rapidly sinks to the ocean floor. At this point, naval leadership is like, okay, Jesus Christ, everybody stop killing things. We need to. F no. When you, when you're just like, all right, I need y'all to chill for like five minutes while we figure this out. I need, I need y'all to just, just chill for like five minutes. <laughs> figure out what all happened. We got to keep this proportional. Remember. Yeah. Proportional. I agree. <laughs> so they start radioing back and forth. Everybody's figuring out what everybody did, if anybody's hurt, what's going on, the whole story. And then as the A6s are making their way back to the USS Enterprise, guess what they happen to fly past? The other modern frigate. Oh, no. So now the entire US Navy is looking at this last frigate like SpongeBob looking at a jug of water. Yeah. I don't need it. <laughs> I need but also, like, realistically speaking, the A6s are pretty much out of ammunition. The only thing they have left are 2,000-pound bombs, yeah. and those just aren't going to be enough by themselves without a harpoon missile to take down no. this ship anyways. So they really are just going to fly by and verify that it's the modern frigate. So the A6 intruders go ahead. They do their flyby. It is, in fact, the new frigate that they thought it was, and it does, in fact, open fire on the A6s. A6s make it out completely unscathed, at which point they pop a U-turn, and one of the A6 pilots is like, hmm. It's the bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. 
don't know. <laughs> you gonna do it. You gonna do it. Oh boy, he gonna do it. So the A6 pulls up, gaining altitude, and then dives down, aims its nose right at the frigate at like a 35 degree angle. They're doing a good old fashioned dive bombing run like it's fucking World War II. Yeah. The AA guns start firing, there's bullets whizzing past the plane, but they're committed now. They're closing in, closing in. The bombardier behind the pilot lets the pilot know, hey, I'm locked on. At which point, bombs away, the pilot pulls up, and the bomb goes right down the fucking smokestack of this boat. Blows up, no way. completely destroying the entire engine room. That frigate is now dead in the water with no power. The A6s go ahead and radio in that they have completely disabled this frigate, at which point the American leadership calls a complete ceasefire. They're gonna go ahead and let that frigate survive get towed off, potentially be repaired. With the US Navy having effectively disabled or destroyed over half of Iran's functioning Navy, the US wow. military decides to call it a good day, yeah. ends Operation Praying Mantis, we all get to live happily ever after. Except later that night, Iran decided that they wanted to fight a little bit more and they launched a bunch of silkworm anti-ship missiles at American vessels. Uh -huh. Luckily, no American vessels were actually hit. However, this is now a huge political problem because America has been mad at the fact that Iran even had silkworm missiles for years at this point. And the American government has made it very clear to Iran that if they ever used them, they would be going to war with America. Who made them? Was it the Soviets? Because I know there's a lot of old Soviet tech in the Middle East. I actually don't know who manufactured Silkworm Tech. Interesting, huh? Period, that's set in stone. So the Reagan administration, not wanting to kick off World War III in the 1980s, yeah. reaches out to the Iranian government and is like, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go ahead and admit that that was an accident. I'm gonna sweep it under the rug and we're never gonna talk about it again. <laughs> because if this makes headline news and the American people find out, I'm gonna have to get real proportional around here. Real quick, So Iran's yeah. like, okay, fine, whatever. It was an accident. Let's sweep that whole thing under the rug. But I am still gonna take America to international court to try to prove that it was a war crime to take out my oil rigs. That way I can get reparations and make America pay for it. So they go to international court, they lay out the case. The international court is looking at America like, okay, well, first of all, you're the first fraction people. I don't know how you think that this is proportional, but it definitely wasn't. So We're the fraction people. Oh my god. Oh my god, if that isn't fucking true, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Except our bullets where we made you measure that in millimeters. Well, Kip, how, how does that make sense? Why do Americans measure that in millimeters? That in millimeters? I don't understand. Why is it metric? Don't, it's better not it's not to ask questions. It makes my head hurt. <laughs> Second of all, according to the Amity Act, you absolutely should not have attacked their oil rigs. This is probably a war crime. At which point the representative for America is like, well, actually, was if the first you read time? the Amity Treaty between Iran and the United States, it only talks about ships and boats. It don't say shit about oil rigs. Me oh my God. Oh my God. It's not a war crime the first time. <laughs> Meaning I wasn't obligated to not attack those oil rigs, yeah. at which point the court is like, shh, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's, Fucking, he's right, he's son right. of a bitch. Okay, well, I guess America's innocent because I've said it once and I'll say it again. It's never a war crime no, the first time. No, and now not. for the best part of the entire story, America now proceeds to go over to Dubai, pick up what's left of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, tow it all the way back to Maine, Legend. then take the ship out of the water, get it in dry dock, cut out the entire damaged section of the ship, including the engine compartment, build another module to fit in its place. This thing weighs like 300 tons. They jack it up, weld it right where it's at, get everything rehooked up, reconnected. And this boat is back out on the ocean one year later on April 1st, 1989. Wild. It then goes on to get recommissioned and serves in the Navy until 2015. I mean, playing Battleship Wild. against America's got to suck, right? Like, haha, I've sunk your frigate. And America's like, first of all, no, you didn't. Second of all, <laughs> fuck your entire Navy as it picks up your board and just throws it at the wall. So in conclusion, if you do ever find yourself being the leader of a foreign nation one day, the best advice that I can possibly give you is A, do whatever you can to not raise gas prices. Yeah. And B, whatever you do, do not fuck with America's boats. We do not like that shit. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is like, comment, subscribe. Maybe go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. Legend. I had no idea this had happened. This was actually really neat. Like, right down the smokestack. Like, wow. That's nutty. How do I even handle that? Like, how do I even handle that? How do I begin to process that? That is...
that that is a that that is that is an an operation. I'm gonna need a bit. I need a bit on that one. That was amazing. Thank you. If you enjoyed this, awesome. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't seen the Fat Electrician before, and want more excellent content, please. I do recommend you go check him out. I'm not partnered with him. Not affiliated with him. I love his content. Love the stuff that he does. You know, and you know, while I react to it, you know, I you know, do think that he does a lot of great work, and think you should check out the originals and go and support him.